Um, okay, so Ray, we, we had some questions in the chat. For people who are not super familiar with this, uh, with this topic, could you uh, elaborate a little more? Could you give us a little bit more historical context about Ukraine and uh, you know the different the different languages they speak there, the 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 different issues going on in Ukraine, and in particular the 2014 coup, like uh, the U.S. backed coup. Why did the U.S. do that, and what what relevance does it have, like particularly to what's happening right now? Well, Ukraine is the heartland of the Slavic people. Uh, without going into too much detail, I think it sets some context to realize that Russian history only goes back to the ninth century, okay? In the, ninth, in the, in the 900s, the Slavic people that inhabited that area around Kiev and up in the Pripyat marshes around uh, Biela, what is now Belarus, um, they had a a burgeoning culture. They had a good literature. They had epic poems akin to Aeneid or one of the Greek, one of Homer's. Uh, one was Slova Apokolivrevi, but they had no written language. Imagine, no written language. So think about the Chinese, think about the Persians or the, or the Egyptians or, you know, or, or the Celts, which of course came first, uh, they had no written language. So, so what happened was two Greek priests went up there, really, uh, really enjoyed and trying to help these, uh, uh, these people to fashion a language. They constructed one, they manufactured one, they used Greek uh, letters, they use Latin letters, they use Hebrew letters that they knew about, and there were some sounds sh -sh like that, that they had to manufacture a letter, but they gave them a written language, and that became Old Church Slavonic, it gradually became Russian, or Ukrainian, or Belarusian, and, uh, and in the 10th century, uh, the prince of Kiev, uh, Kiev and Rus, uh, decided, well, this is really great. We'll have a culture now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll become Christian because that's the thing to do now. And so they all went down to the Dnieper River and they got baptized one Sunday afternoon. And they, of course, they became Eastern Orthodox Christians later when there was the big schism. So what happened after that? Well, Russian history is a pretty sad one because not long after that, um, the, the Tatars, uh, Genghis Khan invaded from the east. For 220 years, he ruled all of mo most of what was Russia. And it was a hell of a time for the Russian people until they got rid of him. As soon as they got rid of him, the Russians were invaded by the Hanseatic League, by the Poles, by, by the Swedes. And it wasn't until late that Peter the Great was able to consolidate and bring some civilization to Russia. Then, of course, you had Napoleon invading in the early 19th century and Hitler in the 20th century. In 20th century, World War II, the Russians really beat the Germans and lost 27 million people. Uh, by contrast, the United States lost 400,000. Now, 400,000 is a lot. 27 million is much more. So that's what, they, that's what they come out of. So they're a little sensitive about Ukraine, where some of these invasions took place. They're a little sensitive about people who don't like Russia being right on their border. So fast forwarding to v v Victoria Nuland, well, she was working for Hillary Clinton at first, and, uh, and then she, she took over. She worked for actually, um, what's his name? The, the guy who was our vice president, Dick Cheney. She, she was his, his national security advisor deputy, okay? And that's where she got, her, she got her spurs, okay? So she hates Russia, it's very clear. And she not only is rabid, but she's naive. 
uh, rabid because she said two months ago, we're going to get sanctions and we're going to stop Nord Stream 2. And I can explain what that is later. Nord Stream 2 is going to be this big sanction. And as soon as the Russians invade Ukraine, that's going to go in. OK. And then when it looked like the Russians are really threatening to invade Ukraine, she goes to the Chinese, mind you. She goes to the Chinese and says, oh, would you help us restrain the Russians? Because they're acting very belligerently in Europe. <laughs> the Chinese say, hey, Victoria, I see one of our people on the embassy, and he or she will explain to you what's really going on. So it's Victoria Nolan, and it's that business behind her. Uh, not only Russian haters, whether real or whether genuine or just educated to hate Russians, but it's also what I call the Mickey Mat. The mil if you got a pencil, the military industrial congressional intelligence media academia think tank complex. They're running things in Washington and there can be no success if for the Mickey Mat absent a credible enemy. And Russia has served that purpose very well. Uh, they continue to serve that purpose. And the way Russia has been demonized over the last five years at least has facilitated these people to try to move a little bit farther than Putin is going to allow them to.